No matter how much you try to hide the truth, eventually, the more you talk, the truth is eventually going to creep out. And when I say creep, I ain't talking about the group TLC. So LeBron James on his Mind the Game podcast, he spoke about how the reasons why he believed that the Miami Heat, they lost their first opportunity at winning their first RBA championship. So Stephen A. Smith Call LeBron James out. He exposes LeBron James for trying to rewrite history publicly. He calls BS on LeBron James's claims, stating that LeBron James is using the roster as an excuse. He said something this week that caught my attention about his early years with the Miami Heat, meaning year one in Miami, and f- talking about filling out that roster around him with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Before I even go any further with my opinion, which I will openly confess, piss me off. Take a listen to this clip, please. My first year in Miami, yeah, we had a big three. And everyone said it's a super team. Super team is super team net. But we had to build our team around all minimum guys, which was still okay, but we didn't fill out the complimentary guys enough. Yeah, we had Rio, we had Udonis. We didn't have enough as far as enough complimentary guys to actually make it all work. And we still made it to the finals. We still made it to the finals and we still probably should have won the finals, but I still give credit. You listen, it is what it is. You you win and you lose and we lost. There's no Dallas good and they hit it they hit a stride at the right time. Dirk was unbelievable. LeBron James, that is some straight bullshit. You got to be kidding me. I know that you didn't just say that with the cameras rolling. That's bullshit. Somebody got to say it, so I'm going to say it. Put up the roster that LeBron is alluding to. You want to make the argument about your roster. I totally understand. But you see, this is why I respect the man. I revere the man. He's number two on the Mount Rushmore all time. He ain't the GOAT. Because let me tell you something right now, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you a taste of history. That roster that LeBron James is alluding to. My point is, what the hell does that have to do with you, LeBron? If you remember, in 2011, LeBron James and the Miami Heat, with that roster, were up 2-1 on the Dallas Mavericks before lo- losing three straight. Do you know that LeBron James in game four scored zero points in the fourth quarter? Do you know that in game five, LeBron James scored two points in the fourth quarter? This wasn't about the roster. You lost it because of you. What stopped you was that you were nowhere to be found in the fourth quarter. Water. LeBron James just has to accept the fact that he choked. It's nothing more to it. And I'm not sure if you guys noticed this or you guys have ever paid attention to this, but LeBron James does this quite often. I've, I've seen him do this before where he tries to downplay and diminish the fact that he played on a super team. He going to say everybody loves to throw around super team. We had a super team. Nigga, that's because you played on a super team. See, LeBron James only does that because LeBron James feels like it takes credit away from him as a player because of the team that he played with. Michael Jordan didn't have a super team. Kobe Bryant, Larry Bird, these guys didn't have super teams. See, it doesn't play into the narrative or the lie that we've been sold. Because remember, he went on record and stated before, without the Miami Heat, he would have been successful anyway. So he doesn't want to give credit to his teammates. All it comes down to is this. LeBron James, in his delusional mind, he thinks that he's the greatest. And by us stating the facts, which is that he had a super team, he feels like that takes away from that. He feels like that's a knock against his go case. They need to change the name of the show from Mind the Game to the mind of LeBron James because all they're doing is just sitting there talking about LeBron James, just sitting there having a narcissist dialogue. And I'm seeing the broad sexuals just so quick to jump to his defense and say, well, he already admitted that it was his fault. He already put all the blame on himself. There shouldn't even been no talks of the roster. It should have been cut and dry. I choked or I underperformed. I put on one of the worst performances of my career. I played like trash, but this is what irks my nerves about Stephen A. Smith. There's no reason why LeBron James should be choking on super teams. You can make that argument about LeBron James not performing in the fourth quarter throughout his entire career. He has a history 
of choking. So how can you be the second greatest player of all time and you have a history of choking on the biggest stages? You can't say the same for Michael Jordan. They always let her bring up Kobe Bryant against the Phoenix Suns. You can't even count on your hand how many times LeBron James has choked in the RBA Finals. He's a professional choke artist. The reason that the Miami Heat weren't able to defeat the Dallas Mavericks in the 2011 RBA Finals is because LeBron James like many other times, has come up short in the fourth quarter. So this is why it makes it hard for me to believe that that LeBron James is a top two greatest player of all time. We always talk about how Kobe had Shaq, but LeBron James had Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh and still had one of the biggest meltdowns in all the history. How can you be considered a top two greatest player of all time and you quit in the fourth quarter? All you have to show for playing on super teams it's three championships. He underachieved with the Miami Heat. He returns back to Cleveland in 11 seasons. All you have to show for being in Cleveland, you've only won one championship. LeBron James Mind the Game podcast is the worst thing that can happen to LeBron James. Why? Because so he can control the narrative. But while doing that, all he's going to do is continue to expose himself. It's great for us because it creates headlines and it does nothing but give credence and just confirm everything that we've been saying about LeBron James for years. So he's just exposing himself to the world. The RBA, they constantly pander to LeBron James's audience and that's why it stunts their growth. That's why the ratings are starting to decline. You can't grow that way. The same thing with ESPN and Stephen A. Smith is learning that the hard way. He's finally escaping the plantation. I truly believe that Stephen A. Smith, he's having an awakening right now. He finally sees the light when it comes to LeBron James and speaking the truth. But I still think that Stephen A. Smith still has some waking up to do. Because I wonder if it ever dawns on him. If you replace LeBron James with Michael Jordan on the Miami Heat, how many championships do you think Michael Jordan would have won? Whatever your answer is, I'm pretty sure it's more rings than LeBron James won with the Miami Heat. And your answer, your answer should tell you why LeBron James doesn't deserve to be in the conversation with Michael Jordan. Because even if you replace LeBron James with Kobe Bryant on that Miami Heat super team, you know that Kobe Bryant would win at least three or four championships on those super teams. So that should even tell you that he's not better than Kobe Bryant. Even Shaq, Kareem. Magic, Wilt Chamberlain, put them on that Miami Heat super team. I guarantee you they would have three or four titles. So LeBron James shouldn't be compared to those guys. Now, I know that they like to redefine what a super team is, but my definition of a super team, multiple all-stars or two superstars on one team. Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen with Dennis Rodman isn't a super team. What would be more of a super team would be if Michael Jordan, if he joined Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or teamed up with Larry Bird, or teamed up with Charles Barkley. That's forming a super team. How could he be compared to the top five who didn't have super teams? 